Hi everyone and welcome to the first leftover show for the Craft and Cook show. Every second week now we're going to have a leftover show and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. But first of all, can you have a look at these guys down here? See these lemons? In this big old house that we're renting, we have this beautiful big lemon tree, but I'm having to have firm words with them this week because I need the lemons for next week's recipe. So I'll have another chat with them and then we'll head inside and have a look at what we've learnt so far in the shows. Okay, Jin Jin, let's get started because we've got lots to get through today. Right, so this is our first leftover week and the whole idea of leftover week is to go back and have a look at what we've learnt so far, look at some other ideas that we can use, the techniques and the recipes that we've learnt along the way. But also, I want it to be a great opportunity for you to share what you've done so far with what we've learnt in the Craft and Cook show. So Kate and I are um, justifying investing in some very swish technology in the next couple of weeks that will allow us to switch in and out on live feeds and recordings with some of the photos that you can send us of what you've made. So if you've made some of the recipes, if you've made some of the projects or some 3D flowers or something like that, please send them in because then we can share them with everyone and um, sharing different ideas and things while we're all not able to be in classes all the time with each other is a great way to be inspired by each other and perhaps pick up some ideas as well. So I've got my notebook because we've got lots to get through. First of all, let's have a chat about what we did in week one. Now, the week that we did that one, uh, we came in to film at home and there was a lot of noise next door. So we were very nervous about the sound and we switched over to doing it with subtitles instead. So a lot of what perhaps I could have shared with you, I didn't have the opportunity to do at the time. So I just want to go through a couple of things for you now. And I've got the bags here, or should say the baskets that we made. So if you remember, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's up on YouTube, so you can just watch it. It's episode one. And it, we did these two little baskets. Now this one is actually a free download on the Chandler's Cottage website and the Textile Pantry website. So you can grab that from those. And it's, uh, it's up on there in my Hampton stripe in um, a red and green stripe, so it looks really nice for Christmas. But we made this little basket up, and then what we did, we altered the pattern, you'll see on it, to make the base wider. And I called it a fruit basket, but look, you could use it for anything. And if you made the sides a little higher, it'd be really nice to sit your knitting in near the couch or something like that as well. We also then talked about is lots of opportunities that you can make the base smaller and the sides taller so that you can turn it into a really nice bottle bag for someone to put a nice bottle of wine in at Christmas or something like that. What I just touched on in the show, and I want to explain a little bit more, is once you've got the concept of how it works, you can really play with it. This is my tidy up and this is a pattern that I've had for a long time, made it in lots of different colours and it's still a really popular design because it's practical. So the whole idea with this is to make the basket like the others that before you saw around the top seam, you can pop in some pockets if you want to, some flaps, some petals, anything that you want to, even a sleeve to put cords through to make it a drawstring. So you can see on this one I've added a little petal shape uh, over the top and it's got an extra little layer on it. So I use this to put my scissors, my pins, and my thimble in. And this can be for my scraps or if I've got a paper piecing project on the go, it's lovely to have them sitting in here. So I've got these spread all over the warehouse and in the studio and we, we use them all the time. So that's just another little idea for you. And it's called a tidy up, but you can call it whatever you like. Now, it's got the same base shape as the other two I showed you. Actually, I'll hold that up there for you. So you can see it's got its right angle V at the bottom and then those panels go up the sides like that. So the important thing when you're working with this type of design is to remember that a circle has 360 degrees and if you want your little bag or your little basket to come up with a flat base, all of these angles on the bottom need to add up to 60, sorry, 360 degrees. So these are all 90 degree angles or a, a square angle for you. So four times 90 is 360. So if you remember that, you can mess around with it. If you wanted to have eight sides, you just divide 360 by eight and you're going to have your right size for it as well. I think that's about 
<laughs> Let's look at it again. I don't know. Divide it by eight, just you'll get there. All right, so then the other one is I wanted to show you is this little bag. And this is our Chinese treasure purse. So this is just taking the concept a little bit further. The sides have been pieced, so into strips before they have been cut down into the templates. But you can see it's a different shape and it has a rectangular base. So you have a look at that there. Uh, I think they are about two lots of 120 and the other two are 60 each. But all of these add up to 360, but I've done two narrower angled panels and two wider ones. And that happens to give me a really nice rectangular shape. So as long as, again, all of them add up to 360, you're going to get a really nice flat base. And this shape is really versatile because if I undo my cord on here, I love little cord bags. It's just It just brings out the little girl and you having little drawstring bags around the place with your projects in or your makeup or your handkerchiefs or your stockings in it on your bedside table they're just they're just lovely to have um, you can see if i open that up like that while i've used it as a drawstring here and i've put my little cord sleeves in on the top rim if i open it up it would actually make a really nice stylish handbag so all i would have to do is add some handles to the top rim or i could actually do some sew on ones so you can play around with it this one i'll just show you too because we're going to talk about them in a minute it's got leaves on it and they're 3D leaves and these have been made exactly the same as the way we made our 3D petals when we did the second show. Okay, so second show? Yes, second show. Oh my goodness, they're adding up really quick. Uh, there's some cherry blossoms on there as well. I love demonstrating these. If you haven't made these yet, they are in next week's show. They'll be in show five with some pre-shaping. We'll come back to that. All right, so you've got that one. So as I said, have a look at the free download pattern as well on one of the websites and have a little bit of a play. And if you've got any questions, just email me at uh, info at Chandler's Cottage, Lisa at the Textile Pantry, just any combination, it will get to me. And we can have a look right now. Show two, we did 3D petals and I know a lot of you have had a lot of fun with them ever since. So let's have a look at what I've been up to. I have finally, finally got the bag together. How over the top is that? So during the show, we talked about how to create your own petals. And I think, okay, I've got him, here he is. This is the little one here. Oh, the sun's just gone in. This is the little one here that we made during the show. And I've made all the others exactly the same way, but I have just used different fabrics and I've slightly changed the shape of some of the petals. So I'll just show you on a close up here. Let me find some. See these little ones here in the middle? So they're more pointy or they're a little tear shape. I've got some down here that are a little bit different again, but they were great fun to do. I'm not gonna deny they, they were a lot of work to do them, but again, it was something I could sew in the machine and then bring home and um, gather the bases of them and assemble them while I was home. Oh, there's one here on the other side I wanna show you. Can you see that one there? Now that was going over the top, but what I did, I made larger petals uh, first, made a large one, and then I made a smaller one in a contrasting color and layered them up together. So they're two layer flowers. So uh, you can see I've added some dimentis as well. I didn't get around to the beads yet, they may come. I have put little Suffolk puffs in the middle of each one. Uh, we will do those also in the next show if you haven't done those before with the technique that I use for those for pre-shaping. So that was good fun and I'm, I'm kind of inspired to do a few more now. So we'll see how we go before we have our exhibition. I'll pop that one back there. Oh, wait, sorry, I'll come back. Can you see on there, we talked about when in stage, uh, sorry, in show three, about putting little loops on your side of your bags and you can see I've put one on there and we've got these cute little purple tassels. So I'm going to be able to put my keys on there or my supermarket token or something for the trolley, something like that. Now, next we show three and we talked about purse frames and we talked about ruching. So first of all, I wanna show you that I am doing my homework. We have now available retail and also through any shop in Australia that you, can, that you go into that you wanna support these beautiful little metallic frames. I was going to say wholesale and if you hear me talk retail and wholesale, that's just what we 
talk about when we talk about what how we sell so we either sell through Chandler's Cottage but we love to support all of our customers in Australia and we love to sell to other stores so that you can support your local community and your shop so these are now available so if you want to go into your shop and say Lisa said on the craft and cook show you can buy the frames for these purses through the textile pantry that's my wholesale shop or just to contact me we can send them out to them so remember we had the little pack of four different colors so i've got two of them done can i just show you here so that's the silver one i've made with the hampton stripe and that's the antique gold so i've got that one sewn on folks ready and i've got two to go one of them i had this gorgeous swirly whirly blue and i'm putting the bright gold frame onto that one and the gunmetal grey, I pulled some of my uh, Summer Palace Blossom. So I've got that one to go. So I will have those done before, hang on, I'm committing now. I will have those done in two weeks time because I'll use them uh, to talk about frames and things in a leftover show. And when we do get to the next leftover, I will have the ruching from show three done for you. Now I have done finished one thing off and it, the show, made me get my act together because a year ago I finished this bag and it sat waiting to get put into the frame and I thought this was a good one to finish off and show you today because you can see uh, we talked about ombre fabrics last last time in show three and you can see I've actually chopped up whole ombre fabric to create the background and then I used another ombre as we did in the show for my flowers. So this one was completed quite a while ago. And then I have set it into the frame like we talked about in show three, but we'll come back. I've actually found a couple more tips I wanna tell you about with putting the frames in and how to make sure that your bag panels are the right width. So keep going, keep making them if you're getting them ready and we'll do that again in our next leftover show. This one I'm really happy with. It gave me an excuse to get online and buy a whole new outfit to go with the bag. So I'm quite pleased about that. I'll show you another time. We'll pop that one over there. Right, and then we got really serious in show four and we started talking about handbag design. So first of all, actually I'm really, I'm really pleased with these. First of all, let's have a look at this one, which is our little geisha bag that we started in the show, also known as Kate's new bag. She's laid claim to this one. So with this, we talked about creating bag dimensions that match your fabric. And I talked about how you can actually measure up a panel like this, add a little bits to the side so that you can get the right shape to make it into a wraparound base and sides bag. So that's what I've done with this one. I have added in two narrow strips of black to each side. And if you have a look at the design, they wrap around to the side of the bag and then the base of the bag is separate down here so i'm really happy with that how that came out i know a lot of you have bought this panel so perhaps that's something you can have a look at if you do want to know the direct the um, exact dimensions that i used then just send me a message and i will um, send them through for you so that's that one happy with that kate that's all good right um, now the next one okay oh well let's go back to this so this is a wraparound base and sides and this is the one that we started making in the show um, these measurements for this bag are pretty much the same in fact I think they are the same as my summertime tote and that's a free download again on both my websites that you can have a look at so that's what it looks like and you can download that and work with the dimensions if you want to from this, if you don't want to calculate your own. But I really encourage you to go back and look at show four again and have a go at doing your own dimensions. All right, down to the serious stuff. Shopping. So probably I've seen so many people with their own homemade bags um, when I've been at the supermarket in the last few weeks and I've been a bit envious. So I have Finished two, and I've got another six on the go at work. So let's have a look. This is my, are you good if I stand up, Kate? You're good? This is my first one. So we talked about how to make a bag and the dimensions um, to fit onto a particular fabric, and I got this one done. We started in the show. So I'm really happy with it. It will hold a fair bit of weight. I've got, I try to make it look as artistic as possible for you. So it's got my French sticks in here. You can't see, but I did put the apples in. 
There are really naughty snacks in the bottom that Philip requested. I tried to look healthy and put the whole meal flour in. And oh, I did buy a paella cooker when I came home from Spain because I missed my Spain paella. So Leanne bought me the rice and we've got to do that this weekend now it's warming up. So this bag is a good size. It will hold a heap of weight um, and I'm happy with it and I've got a heap more. Now this was the other one I showed you. Oh, hang on, let me go back. In this one, I'm not going to pull everything out. Remember we put the chopping boards in the bottom. So in this one, there is a thin chopping board in the bottom. I'm working on getting some of these for us so that we can send them out to you. Now this one here, this, can you hear it? Clunk, clunk. Uh, this is the one that I spoke about putting your milk into. So this is my bottle bag, for want of a better word, because you know when you get your heavy bottles, you don't want them to squish everything and there's condensation when you go and buy it and put it in the car with everything else. So this one has a base in it. And that was the great thing about designing your own bag. You can make your bag perfectly fit any tub that you find you want to use. So if you have a look, I've been shopping. You may judge, there is custard. We are out of soy sauce. Just a, just a little guilt-free aperitif for later. We need the passata for what we're cooking today and juice for the boys. So you can see I've put one of my plastic tubs in the bottom and this acts as my bag base, but it's also perfect for putting your bottles in and it will hold them all really well while you're shopping and getting them home. So that will pick up like that. So if you've got one, I'm sure everyone's got a tub they can use. Um, but if not, have a look for some either in the supermarket or a little discount store and you can design your bag around them to carry your bottles in. So I hope that you've caught up, inspired you to get going with what you've seen if you've just watched it. It's time to start making. Now we've got a few other things to show you today about the recipes that we've done in the first four shows. So I'm going to go and get those ready and then we can have a cuppa and have a look. Okay, I just went and grabbed some serviettes because I think we're going to need them. Rob and Phil are working from home today, so this is going to get eaten pretty quickly when we're finished. So I'd like to go back and discuss some of the things that we did for our recipes during the four shows that we've done so far and give you a couple of other ideas that you can use them for. The first one is our hazelnut macarons. So if you can see those, what I have done, I'm going to slide off. There you go. So what I have done is I've made them again, but I've made them a little bit smaller. So they're only button size. And I've sandwiched them together with some Philadelphia cream cheese and some raspberry jam. So you can take it from just being an individual biscuit and make them a little bit smaller and something a little bit more special. If you do make them a little bit smaller, instead of 20 minutes in the oven, just give them 15 and keep an eye on them, but they'll need less time because they're a smaller biscuit. Then in the second week, we did our balsamic roasted tomatoes. Now I do have another idea for those, so we'll do those another week. But we also had the cornbread. And the cornbread, as I mentioned, is a great recipe because you can make two at a time, freeze some for later. But at the time we did the show, Kate also said, could we add extra ingredients to it? So that's what I've done today. And I have made it with big chunks of parsley and some chili flakes. So it just gives it a little bit more flavor and it also gives it a little bit of heat. And I think we'll be having that tonight with a piece of steak. That was really yummy when I tried it before. Um, then we did my pantry slice. And the pantry slice was all about using up really a lot of the flavor ingredients you have in the cupboard, like cranberries and sultanas and nuts, chocolate chips, things like that. And I thought, you know what, it'd probably make a really nice recipe to pop in a jar to give to a friend as a gift. The thing with this recipe though is it doesn't layer that well like a lot of the lovely, what they call sand recipes that you can see on the internet. But then I thought, you know what, that's okay because it really is going to be a mystery slice, whatever you pull out of the cupboard. So I've made up my mystery slice jar and I think this would be great to take to a friend's, take the wet ingredients with you She's going to have a sliced tin. And so while you have a cuppa, you can actually make it and see what a surprise you're going to get when it comes out of the oven. I actually think I'll make some of those for Christmas presents this year and just, you know, tie the really nice spoon on the side and 
put it in a nice fabric basket like we made in the show, something like that. All right, and then finally, we did our phyllo triangles last week with the honey mustard, sweet potato, the feta and the spinach. And there are lots of different things you can use that recipe for. As I mentioned at the time, it just makes a beautiful salad if you pop in some toasted nuts, almonds or pine nuts with it. So I actually think I've got some leftovers from cooking it today. And I think even tossed through gnocchi with some Greek yogurt would really yummy, maybe with a bit of cheese on top. But for lunch today, I've made it into a pizza topping. So I just went and bought a really nice uh, wholemeal pizza base. I've layered up all the ingredients, including the dressing of the honey and the mustard that we used before. And then when I've poured it out of the oven, I have just drizzled some more honey over the top and spread it with a pastry brush. So it's going to be a sweet, savory pizza. And I think that's going to be really nice. I'd love to think there's some left for dinner for me, but I don't think there will be. So they are just a few more ideas that I hope that you can use with the recipes that we have done so far. And when we come back to the next leftover show, there will be more projects to show you that I've been working on and there'll be more recipe ideas as well. Now next week, um, we're really looking forward to next week because I'm working with some of my favorite things, which is blue and yellow. So the one of the projects I'm working on uses blueprints and what the recipe has got those lemons I showed you out the back if they're ready. Hey, Jim. So we'll get it all together for you. The whole technique base of next week's show is pre-shaping curves. And I've got lots of things I want to show you that will make your life a little bit easier. Your curves a little bit smaller and it should be good fun. So thanks so much for watching Leftovers. And I look forward to seeing you for our fifth Craft and Cook show next week. Bye.